So, before I start today's discussion, uh, let me have uh, another uh, circuit based on uh, diode and uh, resistor and uh, let us try to understand what happens to the circuit. So, as you can understand there, uh, we have two resistors, R1 and R2 and the diode is connected in such a fashion that the cathode terminal is connected to the V. Okay, the cathode is connected to V over there. This is the cathode terminal, this is connected to V. Is it okay now? Okay. So what we find, the cathode terminal is connected to V in. And this entire diode D1 is connected in, in parallel with R2 and you have another resistance R1 connected between the output terminal and the ground terminal. That is all about the circuit. Okay. So equivalently what you can, what you can observe the same circuit, uh, the diode D1 and uh, in parallel with R2, uh, this is the input terminal and you have R1 connected between this output node and the ground terminal. Now once again we are interested in finding out the, uh, the corresponding transfer characteristics. We discuss what is meant by transfer characteristics. Right, so the variation of uh, V out with respect to the variation of V in. So as V in varies from, uh, from minus infinity to plus infinity, then what is the corresponding change in the V out value? That is what we are looking for, okay. Now surprisingly how do you understand that the cathode terminal is connected to the V in. Right, cathode is connected to V in. And now if I allow the input signal to vary from say from minus infinity, suppose this is my range from minus to plus infinity, and you understand that uh, if the anode to cathode potential V A K, if anode to cathode potential if it is just greater than the, the cutting voltage then the drive will be on. If the drive is on then you understand that okay it is a constant voltage model, you understand if the drive is on uh, then you can have uh, some battery over there, VD on, if the drive is on, constant voltage model, we are following this one, it is not an ideal drive, right. And uh, if the drive is off, that means uh, uh, between these two terminal X and uh, this V in, this is basically open circuit, right. Now when the input is minus infinity, when the input is minus infinity, then what will be the status of the diode D1? What do you expect? That means the cathode potential is the is uh, is held at the maximum possible negative voltage. <laughs> what could have been the maximum negative? That is minus infinity. So cathode is at minus infinity, right? What about the anode potential? Anode can be greater and should be greater than that. Suppose there is no current initially. If there is no current in this particular circuit. So understand that this potential, this output potential is equal to your, uh, this ground potential, right. There is no current, no current flowing, suppose initially there is no current, so this potential is equal to the ground potential, this screw shortage. What will be the status of the diode? On, on, on. What is the status? That is on. Okay. Then uh, how can we expect that the uh, uh, say it's okay initially the diode is on fine, but uh, then what happens? You are increasing the uh, the corresponding input voltage from minus infinity towards zero, for example. You are increasing this voltage, right? After some time, it will be off. Huh? After some time. After, after some time. After it gains positive value, it will be off. Huh? After positive value, it will be off. After positive value. Yes, if V in is positive, if it is less than the threshold. If it is less than VD on, then it will be on. If it is less than VD on. Now remember, when the diode is on, when the diode is on, now you have two different paths. Right. Diode is on, that means you have some potential over here. Right. And apart from that, the current is also flowing through this path. That path with, will exist. Okay, from here to here and accordingly what happens, some voltage difference will be created. Now you have to 
check that whether this voltage difference is greater than Gideon or less than Gideon. That we have to see. Clear? So, what about that voltage difference? If I just consider that voltage difference from here to here, what is that voltage difference from here to here from this V in terminal to this V out terminal? Yeah, the question is that when the input is at minus infinity, that is uh, connected to the cathode terminal of the diode, anode is obviously greater than that, initially zero. So, the, what is the status of the diode? The diode will be on. If the diode is on, you understand, okay, there is a, it's a constant voltage model, so you have some battery, something like that, between this point and that point. Right. And apart from that, uh, you understand the current will flow through this path. Right. So, the current will flow through this path. Now, when the current flows through this path, what happens? You have some drop across this. You have some drop. Right. This will make this potential what? Less than V. Less than V. Now, a point will come when this difference is exactly equal to the V on. Now, had this been the case, so that is that is the the threshold point. And after that, if more current flows through this, then what happens? Uh, this diode will become open. Right. So, how can I understand? I mean, what should be that particular point? What should be that that mean value when the diode becomes off? Can you calculate and tell me the value? I don't want to be like. You just calculate and tell me. R1 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 plus R2. So when the diode, so uh, here we have this is V. You have R2, you have R1, you have V out. Now that will be the scenario when the diode is off. When the diode is off, that means you have something in parallel with R2, diode is off means diode is open circuit. The something connected in uh, open circuit, uh, something connected in parallel and if it is open circuit, that means you can just neglect the contribution of that particular thing. So simply what you have, simply you have V in R2, R1, something like that. Right. And then what will be the V out expression? It's very simple. V out is equal to V in upon R1 plus R2, that is the total current going in this particular uh, circuit multiplied with R1. Right. So, V out is equal to V in upon R1 plus R2 multiplied with R1. Or V out upon V in is equal to R1 by R1 plus R2. That's great. When the, when the diode is off. But initially the diode is on. That happens when your, your input voltage is, is positive or at least greater than zero. But even, even if the input voltage is less than zero, then also the diode will become off. So, you have to identify that particular point. How to identify that particular point? Sir, so we will take the potential drop across R2 is equal to yes. Vdot. So, you understand that over here, so over here, this potential is, sorry, yeah. So, this potential is equal to V in and what about this potential? Uh, v out, so V out you can represent in terms of R1 and R2, what is that? So V out is equal to V in upon R1 plus R2 because the current will flow through this multiplied with R1 multiplied with R2 or R1 which one? R1 <laughs> R1, right? So, what is the voltage? I mean, VKA. What is VKA? Cathode minus anode. Cathode minus anode. So, what is that voltage? So, VKA is nothing but V in minus V out. Cathode minus anode, cathode is at V in, anode is at V out, right? 
So if you just plug in this value v in minus this entire thing, so ultimately it becomes r2 by r1 plus r2 times v in right. Now when this entire thing vka, when this vka or rather when vak is equal to vd on, that is the extreme point or vk is equal to minus vd on. The guide will be on as long as your vak anode to cathode is equal to vd on. Right. Or in other words, your vka is equal to minus vd on. Here. VKA is equal to minus VAK. So, you have already calculated this one. That means your R2 by R1 plus R2 times V in is equal to minus VD on. From where you can get the V in to be minus R1 plus R2 upon R2 multiplied with VD on which is equal to minus 1 plus R1 by R2 times Vd1. So, V V A K. okay. You understand that? Okay, fine. So, let me just do one thing. It will be black. Well, so initially when the input is very negative, I mean minus infinity, the diode is on, you understand. And there is a flow of current through this path. There is a flow of current through this path. Right? And initially there is no current. Now initially there is no current means what? That voltage is held at zero. Okay. So this is at minus infinity, this is at zero. Now as the current increases, as you increase the V in voltage from minus to minus infinity to some value, what happens? You have more current. More current means more drop across this other one. That's, that means this potential will increase. So your cathode potential is fixed at minus infinity. And your potential is increasing. And the anode potential is increasing. Initially, initially it was at minus infinity, that voltage is zero. Then the this input increases from minus infinity towards zero, and this voltage also increases. Both of them, cathode potential as well as anode potential. But the rate of increase that is different. It's not the same. Okay. So, what is the amount of uh, voltage that is developed at the anode terminal cathode? You can know it is only V in. So, the cathode potential is cathode potential is Vk is equal to V in. You said that rate of increase of both is different, hmm. but the slope is small. I am just telling you. Vk is equal to V. Vk is equal to V, right? And what about your VA, the anode? Anode potential? V out. So, can you represent this V out in terms of V? Yes or no? Yes. yes. So, what is that? This current is flowing through this path. So, what is the total current? V in upon R1 plus R2. And that current is flowing through R1, so what is the voltage drop across R1, that is this current multiplied with R1, okay. So this V, so the current is V in upon R1 plus R2 multiplied with R1, that is VA, that means anode potential. So cathode potential is at minus infinity or it just increases from minus infinity. And the anode potential is at V in multiplied with something. Right. 
Now suppose let let me consider. I don't have the the uh, corresponding values for R1 and R2. But suppose this ratio, this R1 by R1 plus R2. Suppose this ratio is equal to say uh, say uh, this is one by ten. Okay, this is one by ten. Suppose let me call this ratio R1 upon R1 plus R2. This ratio is equal to say let it be say one by ten. Okay, that means. If your input changes from V in, suppose V in changes from say minus twenty to minus ten, minus twenty to minus ten. Okay, that means what about the change at V out? Minus twenty to minus ten. V in changes from minus twenty to minus ten. So V A or V out changes from minus two to minus one. So that so these two differences are not the same. In one case, okay, it is fifty percent. Both of these two cases, but twenty to ten and two to one. So this range is different. Now, if it is so that over here at this particular point. The potential is something v in, and at this particular point, the potential is something that is v out. Now, suppose the potential over here and the potential over here changes by the same amount. Suppose it increases by delta v, it also increases by delta v. It reduces by delta v, it also reduces by delta v. Then there is no change in the status of the diode, right? But if it changes from minus two to minus ten, it changes by from minus two to minus one. So if we just consider the absolute value, that is different. It's not the same. Percentage, we can say that okay, minus twenty to minus ten, fifty percent drop; minus two to minus one, fifty percent drop. But here, the diode will be on as long as this voltage is greater than. I mean, cathode anode to cathode voltage is greater than twenty ohm. Right. So you have calculated V A, that is R one by R one plus R two multiplied with V in. So what about your uh, V K A? Cathode canon voltage V K A V K is nothing but V K minus V A. So V K is nothing but V in, and V A is nothing but R1 by R1 plus R2 times V in, which is equal to R2 by R1 plus R2 times V in. Okay. So that is the V K. So what about V A K? That's the opposite. So your V A K. So V A K is nothing but minus of V in R two by R one plus R two. That is V A K. And what do you get for voltage? Now you have to ensure that. That voltage now when this voltage V A K value is equal to V D on that is the extreme condition. When V A K is equal to V D on, then up to this point the diode will be on. So what is that value? So if you just uh, substitute over there, V in R two by R one plus R two. That is equal to V D on. So what is that corresponding V in? So the corresponding V in is given by minus R1 plus R2 R2 times V D on. That is equal to minus of 1 plus R1 by R2 times V D on. So when V in is equal to that much, that signifies the end of The diode in the on stage, right? If you further increase the input voltage beyond this point, it's a negative voltage because video is positive. If you increase the uh, input voltage beyond this point, then what happens? The as we have already seen, this voltage changes by or uh, the corresponding change is by um, by by an amount of say ten. And that enhancement is by an amount of only say one minus twenty to minus ten. Here it is minus two to minus one. That means the cathode potential increases at a 
faster rate as compared to the anode potential. Ultimately, which drives the diode to be in the off state. Right? Now, when the diode is off, when the diode is off, then you understand that what should be my corresponding uh, V out versus V in expression. Right? And although here, uh, although it is mentioned that it's a constant voltage model, but eventually, uh, since uh, uh, as far as the, the graph is concerned, it doesn't uh, say so. It says that uh, the diode uh, we are considering here is like an ideal kind of thing because they have mentioned that uh, that particular thing, V out versus V in, they are having a slope of unity over there. That means V in is equal to V out. Okay, so now, sir, sir, could you please explain how this, like, which one? Uh, sir, uh, sir, so that uh, V A K equals to V D on. No, you have to you have to ensure that V A K is equal to V D on. If V A K is less than V D on. If VH is less than VD on, your diode will be off. And if VH is greater than VD on, the diode will be on. So VAK is equal to VD on is that particular boundary condition. Okay, that is a boundary condition. If your anode to cathode voltage is greater than VD on, then the diode will be on. If it is less than VD on, then the diode will be off. Okay, now let's uh, move to... So the discussion that we have made over the last uh, 20 minutes, that is something that we have already discussed in the last class. And today's class is basically an extension of that. Now we are moving towards a new type of concept that uh, we have seen last day. That uh, last day we have discussed different types of diode models, constant voltage model, practical diode model, and then the ideal diode model. Basically, you have three different characteristics associated to any diode. One is your the cutting voltage, second one is the input resistance in forward bias, and the input resist our resistance in the forward bias, and the resistance in the reverse bias. We have seen that for a diode, if it is an ideal one, then the VD on is equal to zero, R on is equal to uh, zero, and R off is equal to infinite. That's the ideal scenario. Practically, you understand that VD on is not zero, it's greater than zero. And for, for example, for silicon diode, it is 0 0.7 volt, for uh, germanium diode, it is 0 0.3 volt. And the on resistance and off resistance. We have not said anything about those resistances yet. I have only told you in the last class that, okay, ideally the on resistance will be equal to 0, ideally, and off resistance will be equal to infinite. That is also true for constant voltage model. On resistance, zero, off resistance, infinite. But you know that the on resistance cannot be exactly equal to 0. The on resistance is slightly greater than 0 and the off resistance is not equal to infinity. It is high but it is not equal to infinity. Right. So these are the extreme conditions. Now the question is that how can you calculate the diode resistance? In fact, there are, there are two different notions of resistances whenever the operation of diode is concerned. So already you know that this is my, this is my uh, current voltage characteristics of any diode. So, uh, uh, when the, uh, you increase the VD, then uh, corresponding ID will increase in this particular exponential fashion. You know the formula. ID is equal to IS, e to the power VD by VD minus 1. Or if you just neglect this minus 1, then it is like ID is equal to IS, e to the power VD by VD. That's all. Okay. That's great. So now, you understand that the, the corresponding slope, because it's a basically an exponential graph, e to the power A. Right. So it's not a straight line, it's an exponential graph. So how can you, for, so for, for example, suppose uh, you don't have a diode over there. Suppose you have a resistor, simple resistor. Then what should be my current voltage characteristics? Suppose you don't have a diode. So suppose you'd like to find out the current voltage characteristics of a resistor. Linear. 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 Straight line. Uh, passing through origin. Yeah. Linear. And if you take the slope of this particular, slope of this particular straight line, that is nothing but your conductance, one by r, and that is constant. Constant flow straight line is having constant flow. 
But here you find that it's not a straight line. This is an exponential graph. So if you take the derivative, so this derivative is not constant. At every point, you have different derivative. Here you have some derivative, here you have some other derivative. And as you go on increasing the corresponding voltage value, the, the derivative also increases. Right? So, and what is that derivative ultimately? What, uh, what does this particular derivative tell you at, at every point? This derivative is nothing but 1 upon the resistance. That is the conductor. Ui dx. Del i d by del v. Now, here, what we have? You have the slope is very small. Here, the slope is very small, right? That means what? Conductance is small or resistance is large. And here, if you consider, here the slope is very steep, steeper slope. So, your conductance is large or resistance is small. So, at every point, you have different resistance. It's not a constant resistance. So, last day I told you, na, 1 volt, 1 milliampere, 1 1.5 volt, say 1.8 milliampere, 2 volts. So, at every point of time, you find that the resistance is different. Now, if you can realize something which, which does not possess a constant resistance kind of thing, then this is nothing but a diode. And as we increase the voltage, the corresponding resistance also reduces. Why? Because it is e to the power x. I is equal to y is equal to e to the power x. If we just consider this particular formula that, okay, y is equal to e to the power x. So what is your y? Y is your or y is equal to some k into the power x. So y is nothing but your current and x is your voltage here. So what is dy dx? So what is y dash? y dash is also e to the power x. So as x increases, as x increases, the y dash also increases. That means as voltage increases, the conductance increases. What is that y dash? y dash here is conductance, dy dx or di by dg. So conductance also increases. That means as you increase the voltage, the resistance drops. Right. So at every point, you have different resistance. Now, gradually you see that we can use this diode in a circuit where your your applied voltage, either it's a constant voltage or DC voltage. You understand what is the difference between DC voltage and DC voltage? So when it's a constant voltage, some DC volt, some battery, say 1 volt, 1.5 volt, 2 volt, 5 volt, something like that. <laughs> then you have a particular notion of resistance. You understand what is my voltage, what is my current. Suppose this is my voltage. Your voltage is given by say VD1. And suppose your current is corresponding current is ID1. You take the ratio of this. That will give you a particular resistance which we call as static resistance. Now, for simple resistor, the notion of the static resistance and the other type of resistance, which is also called dynamic resistance. So, for simple resistance, a simple resistor, these two types of resistance are not there. Because at every point, you have the same slope. But here, I do find that at this particular point, if you take the this VT by ID, VT1 by ID1, the, the value that you are getting over here and over here, these two values are not the same. So, whenever you are exciting a circuit with a particular uh, fixed voltage, then it is called, uh, and if you just measure the corresponding current, then uh, the ratio of these two, VD1 by ID1, will give you the static resistance. But you also see that, most of the cases, we do not stipulate the diet circuits using only DC, uh, DC sources. There are uh, small signal sources or, or sinusoidal signal. That means signals which vary with time. It is not that the signal is always constant. Okay. So, for example, suppose my input is such that uh, it varies, the corresponding diode voltage varies from VD1 to VD2. And therefore, the corresponding current varies from ID1 to ID2. So, at this particular point, you have a particular resistance. At this point of time, at this particular point, you have another resistance. So, VD1 by ID1, VD2 by ID2. So, these two values are different. Now, suppose I know that the diode voltage or the voltage applied across the two terminals of the diode, VD1 or VD2. 
So the variation is from VD1 to VD2. Right. And the corresponding current variation is from ID1 to ID2. Now, if I assume that this variation is small enough with respect to that particular value. Suppose this value VD1 is equal to say 0 0.9 volt and suppose VD2 is say 0 0.95 volt. So the variation is only 0 0.05 volt. Now, if this, this variation is small with respect to the, the base value, then we call this notion as the small signal concept. And under this condition, we can assume that, okay, here the slope is different, here the slope is different. But if, if this difference is small enough, then I can, within this region from here to here, although the slope is different, but I, I may assume this exponential graph as a straight line. Straight you know that e to the quad x is equal to 1 plus x plus x square factorial to all these things. Like a differential yeah. element, right? Yes. So if you just consider that this line x is very small, then this x square x to x to the power for those higher order terms can be neglected. That's an approximation. So I may assume that okay, it's basically it's a exponential one. But if this variation is small from here to here, if this variation is small, then what I can assume that uh, this exponential graph can be approximated as a straight line, linear approximation, straight line approximation. And then you may calculate the corresponding resistance. What is that resistance? It's nothing but if you, ha you have to calculate what is my delta VD and what is my delta ID. And the ratio of these two will give you another kind of resistance which is called the dynamic resistance. So how to calculate this dynamic resistance? The, the value is given over there, the final value. How to calculate this one? The formula. The formula is something like that. You know this expression? You know this expression? Okay, let me just, it will be better if I... Take the previous, page. previous page. Nothing is there in the previous page. Only the final expression. But how to derive this? How to derive this expression? Only the final expression is given. Right. But you have to calculate. So, the calculation says that, you know the expression, right? The expression is something like that. Your ID is equal to IS e to the power VD upon VT. I am just forgetting about this minus 1 term. Okay. Then what about your delta ID by delta VD? What is that? Some constant K will be there. E to the power MX. E to the power MX. If you differentiate this with respect to X. M into E to the power MX. So what is M here? 1 by VT. So is by vt multiplied with e to the power vd upon vt, right? Yes. Now this entire thing is e to the power vd upon vt is what? Id. Id. So id by vt. Okay. So what is del id by del vt? Del id by del vd <laughs> is nothing but the notion of conductance. So one upon that will give you the value of the dynamic resistance for a diode which is written by Rd which is given by Vt upon Id. What is Vt? Vt is your thermal voltage. At room temperature it is 25 millivolt. Suppose uh, I, I say that the, my diode current is given by say 5 milliampere. My diode current is 5 milliampere and uh, this Vt uh, that is thermal voltage at room temperature suppose it is 25 millivolt. Now I calculate 25 millivolt by 5 milliampere. What is that? 5 ohms. So that is the dynamic resistance of the diode. So it is not zero. It is not zero. You can calculate the dynamic resistance. And uh, now if you from, from, from the uh, notion of your uh, constant voltage model, ideal diode model, now if you move towards the practical diode model, now you understand that so far you have seen what? So far you have seen, okay. So far you have seen that this diode can be represented by, yeah. So, so far you have seen that the diode can be represented by 
in the constant voltage model that can be represented by a simple battery. Yes. Because the R on was zero and R off was infinity. That we have seen already. But whenever we are moving from the ideal diode model or constant voltage model to the practical diode model, then it is no longer zero. So you have the battery. So suppose you have this diode, for example, in your circuit. So this is equivalent to, for a practical diode, this is equivalent to, you have one battery in series with a resistance. So this is your VD on and this value. Now if I consider that okay, my diode is exposed to DC input only. So this will be your simple static resistance. And if the diode is exposed to small signal, then this is a dynamic resistance that is RT. Remember, whenever I consider small signal motion, we will discuss this thing later on. Basically, there are two concepts. Your signal can be constant, a DC one, or your signal can be time varying one. One signal which doesn't change with time, which we call a constant signal, a DC signal, and the second type of signal which varies with a time varying signal. And your diode circuit is exposed to both of them. Not only the diode circuits, gradually you also see the same is also applicable for your transistor circuit. It is exposed to DC part as well as the small signal part or the time varying part. Okay. Now, if the circuit is a linear one, hopefully you understand what is meant by the linear circuit. Have you studied the law of superposition in your? Basic electrical, hopefully you have studied, no? law of superposition, the linearity of the circuit. Now, I may visualize, okay, I may visualize that this is my linear circuit. This is my linear circuit, okay. Suppose I am having two sets of input. One is the DC input and second one is the time varying input. And accordingly, I have two types of output. One is the DC output, second one is the time varying output. So when the DC input is applied only, you have some DC output. Right? When the time varying input is applied only, you have some time varying output. Now when the combined input is applied, and if your circuit is a linear one, linear circuit, then for a combined input, your output should be the individual summation of these two different components. DC output plus the time varying output. Now whenever we analyze the circuit from the perspective of only DC signal, then all the time varying components should be made zero. And on the other hand, whenever I observe or I analyze the circuit from the time varying perspective, I make all the DC component inactive. So one component acting alone, either your DC component or the time varying component. And the overall output is a combination of these two. Clear? So this is a combined one, VD on and RD. Now whenever you just place this entire thing into your time varying component or time varying analysis, then obviously this VD on should be absent. Because this is a constant, uh, constant battery. That should be absent there. And you have only this RD present in the small signal model. Okay, gradually we will discuss all these things in detail. Okay, so. Now suppose, uh, as you already know, this is my uh, the current voltage characteristics of any uh, diode VD versus ID. Looks something like that, exponential graph. 
and now the voltage that you are applying across the diode this voltage is not a constant voltage this voltage is having a shape like this a sinusoidal signal which is riding on a value of v0 so it's a combined input that is input v0 is the dc level you understand what is meant by the dc level the average level you might be knowing what is dc level average level that means whenever so this particular input this vt they are having two different components so what is the dc component of that what is the dc component no it is a dc component v0 v0 is a dc component and what about your time varying component vp not vp exactly vp yeah. sin vp sin vp is sin omega t sin omega t right so basically this particular input vt is having two components one is the dc component and second one is your time varying component now if the input is something like that this component is zero yes. now if the input is something like that this component is greater than v0 yes. right now if your input is something like that that means what this component is same but the time varying component is more you understand now what is the difference between the dc component and the time varying component yes, one part that is always common right that is also called the average average contribution like in exam you get say the marks that you are getting in your exam is like it's it's not constant that is very obvious it's not constant the marks that you are getting in an exam somebody gets 50 somebody gets 65 somebody gets 70 somebody gets 95 there is a variation Now from where we can find out the average marks, average marks, average percentage of marks. You know how to find out the average? Sum them up and divide by the number of students. Suppose the average is equal to 62. So 62 is the average. Somebody has got 70. So eight numbers are eight points above the average. Somebody gets say 55. Seven numbers less. Seven less than the average. so that variation is the ac variation or the time varying component and 62 is a is a dc part so any signal you can you can you can visualize any signal not only this electronic signal not only this electrical signal all the signals around us you can visualize those signals as a combination of two different component one is a dc component that is constant with respect to time and second one is the the time varying component okay so here also i find that this vt the dc value of the vt is nothing but v0 and the time varying component is given by vp sin of omega t okay now suppose i am providing this particular input to a diode cell Why I am saying all this is because that that analysis is needed whenever we move to the the subsequent lecture. So Try to understand this slide very clearly. So what happens? Suppose this is applied to the input of any diode circuit. So what I get the corresponding DC value is V naught, and the Time varying component is nothing but VP sine of omega t. So the same graph has been drawn along this axis, along this x-axis. Just flipped by 90 degree. Okay. So whenever your input is having only the DC part, only V zero part, then what is the current? I naught. Okay. Now when the input is having positive peak over there what is the current this much suppose let it be i1 this current when the input is having negative peak what is the current this one 
Now try to visualize, suppose this variation is not that small. Suppose this variation is large, something like that. Okay, then you have some DC value. Now whenever your input is having, suppose, uh, suppose this is say 5 units, for example. And suppose this variation is say uh, 3 units over there. So 5 plus 3, 8 and 5 minus 3, 2. Okay, so you have 5 as your DC point, 5 to 8 positive part, 5 to 2 negative part, the AC component and the time varying component. And now you try to find out e to the power, to basically it's an exponential graph, e to the power 5 minus e to the power 2, that difference, and e to the power 8 minus e to the power 5, that difference, whether these two differences are same or not. Large. Obviously not. E to the power 8 minus e to the power 5 is even more larger as compared to the power 5 minus e to the power 2. Right. So, these variations, so from uh, say, uh, let me call this current say I1, okay, and this current say I2. And if this VP is large, suppose VP is large, then this I1 minus I0 will be greater greater than I2 minus I0. Is that point okay? Second graph. Second graph means this one, this part, this one. Okay, you understand this input, right? Now the point is that suppose I am having some circuit, so this input is fed to a diode circuit, or rather this input is directly fed to the between the two terminals of the diode, right? Suppose you have a diode over there. Some resistance might be there, and this input is nothing but your VT. Okay, now I would like to observe what is the corresponding change in the current. Okay, so you know the current voltage characteristics of that. How does it look like? Last week I have already explained this on video versus ID, that is the kind of voltage characteristics of the diode. Now, this time we are dealing with a time varying component of the input. It's not only single value, it's not a DC value, it's a time varying component. Right. So, what I am doing is that I am just placing this entire thing, this uh, voltage as a function of time, because here what we have, here we have voltage versus current. So I have to superimpose this axis on this axis because both of them are voltage axis. So basically I am flipping it 90 degree, right? So now I am superimposing this one. So this is my voltage axis. This is the time axis. We just take a look at them here, it's time axis, right? The DC value of this voltage is V0. Now, if this is your DC value, then what is the current? You just project them on this particular graph. The current is coming out to be I0. Okay. And when the input is at its positive peak, Vp, then suppose I1 is the current. When the input is at its negative peak, suppose I2 is the current. Now, my point is that suppose your uh, the variation of this uh, time varying component that Vp. Vp is basically the uh, it's the peak of the sinusoidal signal, max of sinusoidal signal. Now my point is that suppose this Vp value is larger with respect to your or, or at least comparable. If not larger, it is comparable to V0. Suppose V0 is say 5 volt and that Vp is equal to 60 volt. So you have a scenario something like that. So my input is my input is something like that. Vt is equal to 5 plus 3 sin omega t. Sorry, 5 plus 3 sin omega t. <coughs> 3 sin omega t. So, under DC case, what is my input? 5. When the input achieves its peak, then what is the output? What should be the corresponding input? That is 8, 5 plus 3, 8. When the input is at its negative peak, the output is, I mean, the corresponding value is 2, 5 minus 3, 2. So, if it is 5, if it is 5, you have some current I0. When it is 5 plus 3, 8, you have some other kind I1. When it is 5 minus 3, 2, you have another kind I2. Now, my point is that 
this e to the power so you know that it's not a linear one right it's not a linear one it's a it's a exponential one so the current over here i not is nothing but it's, it's basically some constant multiplied e to the power pi right here what we have 8 e to the power 8 and here you have e to the power 2 so the 5 to 8 and 5 to 2 these two differences are same but e to the power 5 to the power 8 and e to the power 5 to the power 2 these two differences are not the same so what we have ultimately you don't get an sinusoidal a sinusoidal graph like this over here if my uh, vp value is comparable with respect to v v not on the other hand if if the scenario is something like that suppose my vt is given by a plus say 0 0.01 sin of omega t just try to find out the difference between these two description in one case you have 5 plus 3 sin omega t other case you have 5 plus 0 0.01 sin omega t for 0 0.01 sin omega t the variation is small 500 times small right and other case is comparable 5 and 3 they are comparable and both of these two cases diode will be on there is no doubt about that so they are cutting voltage 0 0.5 volt or 0 0.3 volt or 0 0.7 volt well above this no doubt about that but here what you find the graph that you are getting over here that graph here uh, for the second case uh, it, it will be a simple sinusoidal for a sinusoidal input if my input voltage is sinusoidal you can expect that my uh, out, this output current is also sinusoidal because this fluctuation is small okay but if my input is like 5 plus 3 sin omega t you don't expect this one you find here the variation is more and here the variation is less so here you have more fluctuation here you have less fluctuation something like that and which violates the notion of small signal right So the basic idea is that the EC component magnitude is very high when comparable to the DC component, then full-fledged exponential curve, or else... That means distortion will take place, right? Sometimes we will also use this one for uh, uh, wave-shaping, we will be discussing wave-shaping later on, uh, hopefully today. So, there you will see that uh, whenever I, I call it a wave-shaping kind of thing, that means suppose some uh, sinusoidal signal is present at the input side i would like to shape the the corresponding nature accordingly now if the wave is completely distorted that is not something that i am looking for <coughs> clear so i have to ensure that this wave shape has to be maintained and you know to ensure that uh, the corresponding fluctuation with respect to the dc value should be uh, smaller so that the wave shape is not distorted and that is also applicable for any amplifier circuit as well. Clear? Hopefully you know that for any BJT amplifier, the input side, for an for NPN transistor, PNP transistor, the input side between base diameter is nothing but a diode. Input side of any transistor, base diameter, that is nothing but a diode. So you have to consider that particular notion in the diode circuits as well as for the uh, for the BJT circuit. You have to always ensure that my fluctuation with respect to the DC value should be small enough. Even if the DC is zero, sometimes suppose you are not bothered about the negative half cycle, your DC is zero. Then also you have to maintain this one. Okay. So, uh, your uh, Vt is equal to V0 plus, so I don't know why they have written like Vp cos of omega t, basically sign, this phase shift will be there, and then ultimately uh, that, is the, that is the notion. So, I dt is equal to, uh, you have Is exponential V0 by Vt, that's the constant part, this is constant, and plus this one, I0 not, I not by Vt into Vp cos of omega t. It's a cos of sign, it will be sign. Depending how so you just consider, if you just... Uh, uh, shift the time uh, from here to here. Suppose this is your t is equal to zero. If I consider this is my t is equal to zero line, then it will become cos. No problem. Sir, so, this is zero data maintains of the time. This is zero. Now uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes it is also true that. Uh, sorry. Sometimes it is also true that I don't have any DC component in my signal. <laughs> uh, we will see it gradually. Not for amplifier circuits or for diode based circuits, suppose the DC is absent. I mean, your input is, is lying on zero DC. Okay, so then suppose your input is like 
say two sine omega. Okay, so two, if I consider two sine omega t or five sine omega t, and uh, now if you consider this one, if you compare this one with say zero point uh, zero one sine omega t, you understand the notion is different. Why different? Because once again, if I have input something like that, suppose my input uh, v t, suppose there is no DC component, only the time only component is there. Is suppose it's, this is given by Vm sine of omega t. Now, if my Vm value, that will be say 0 0.01, and suppose Vm is equal to say 5, this one not the same. Why not? Because when Vm is equal to 5, that means within this range, suppose this is my input, this is my input, this is my 5. And accordingly, I can have, let me now, I have to use some different color, yes. This is my 5. Suppose this is 4. This is 3. This is 2. This is... Okay. So, when your input is just 1, input is just 1, you have some current, e to the power 1. When the input is 2, e to the power 2. E to the power 3 like that. So here your input is changing from 1 to 5 like this. Now if my uh, diode circuit, uh, for, for this particular diode, if the variation is that much from 0 to 5, where your cut-in voltage is only 0 0.7, so ultimately what you are getting at the output, you don't expect that uh, your output is also following this sinusoidal nature. Voltage 1, voltage 2, voltage 3, voltage 4, voltage 5. I am not bothered about the need of cycle. Suppose the need of cycle is absent, it's not at all interest, uh, doesn't get any interest in me. Still, still since the variation is from 1 to 5, that is large or that is comparable with respect to your uh, cutting voltage. Because now what you are over here, you are over here. Now the variation is something like that. So this is 0. So this is the fluctuation of the input. Okay, this is the fluctuation. So, do you expect that over here, over this entire range, over this entire range, this is this will show you a constant uh, resistance? No. It's not that the DC value, but the fluctuation we have to restrict. If it is large, no, from here to here, if it is large, so uh, obviously now if you extrapolate this one over there, if you project. Do you expect, if I project this over there, over there, do you expect that you are getting this, uh, uh, this particular sinusoidal signal over there, the half sinusoid? No. It can be sinusoidal only if this is a straight line. Otherwise not. We have started drawing now, last semester, last year, I started drawing. So there also you have this, all these projections and all these things, hopefully you have done. Now if it is not a straight line, if it is a parabola or any other nonlinear graph, now, if the variation is that much, you don't expect a uh, sinusoidal over there. But in our subsequent discussion, we will assume that we will assume that the fluctuation is small, so that we are operating within that region of the diet over which the slope can be considered to be constant. Right. So if V naught is absent, Vm should be very small. Vm has to be very small, obviously. Yes. VM has to be very small. VM, some, now suppose I am not bothered about the negative half cycle. Because you know that in this region the diode is off. Now if I want to ensure that the diode will be on both in the positive half cycle as well as the negative half cycle, then I have to shift the center thing towards this side. Otherwise the diode will be off. But suppose I am not interested about this negative half cycle. Then also I have to ensure that this fluctuation should not be very large. Had this been the case, then uh, although you are providing some sinusoidal voltage input over there, you are not supposed to get sinusoidal current output. And you are allowed to pass this sinusoidal current output through a resistor. Right. So ultimately, the, uh, in this diode circuit, you have this diode current and this diode current flows through a resistor. And it follows your uh, Ohm's law. 
uh, if my if that particular input uh, if that particular input produces some non sinusoidal uh, output current then ultimately when this non sinusoidal output current is allowed to flow through a resistor that will provide some non sinusoidal output voltage that you don't want so the bottom line is that you cannot allow the the corresponding variation to be very large so that the diode uh, i mean the if, if you take the uh, corresponding uh, slope at the different points, then the slope is becoming different at different points. I am assuming that I am operating with a small region over which the register over which the slope is remaining almost constant. That is the assumption that we are making right now. Now, with this understanding, we will be moving towards the, uh, the different types of wave stepping circuits involving diodes. Sir. Sir.